The only problem was her doctor couldn't admit it. And many people in the medical world are trained to do heroics, to do everything they can because that's the oath that they took. And my sisters and I had to sit down with the doctor and say, it's time to quit. Mom knew it was time to quit. She was ready to go into hospice. And it, but it was so difficult for the medical folks to, to give up trying to save the situation. Letting go and accepting the changes in our aging parents is the only way out of this cycle of grief. We must leave our father and mother in their old age to be whatever they will be. Alice's husband, Mike, asked the question, when do you know when to quit? Many of the behavioral changes in our aging parents may be reversible. Sometimes medication or poor eating habits or depression are the causes of apathy and confusion. Many supposedly people who have been dubbed senile, sometimes things clear up when the doctor makes a different tweak on the medication or adjusts or eliminates a different medication. How do you know when to let go? The only answer I know for that is when you've done all you can do. When you've done all you can do, then it's time. Your spiritual task as an adult child is to turn your parents over to God and to leave them there and stop trying to control their aging. We need to take emotional leave of our parents. First we leave, then we grieve. And here's the third one. We need to forgive. Look at Romans 15 and verse 1. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Often the job of letting go is difficult and complicated because we have needs that are unmet. Forgiving our parents as being less than perfect often comes more or less difficult as they age. In old age, people become what they've always been, except in spades, and sometimes that can drive you crazy. Quick temper, negativism, hostility to spiritual things, a judgmental attitude, the lack of interest in being a grandparent, these traits are all accentuated and can really drive you to the end of your wits. Demanding that our parents change will be self-defeating. It will only drive us deeper and deeper into depression. It will distract us from facing our own judgmental, unforgiving attitudes. Whether or not our parents change, We've got to change for our own good. We need to forgive. First, what are we forgiving? Childhood hurts. When Dorothy called, and that's not her real name, she called from another state and her mother had just died. She was so depressed, they told her that she needed to get some professional help. Her mother had been ill with cancer for many years. She was an only child and she was her mother's only caregiver. After working an exhausting eight-hour shift at the hospital as a nurse, she came home and worked another shift as the caregiver for her mother. Gradually, she gave up her own life to care for her mom. Yet despite all of her devotion and sacrifice, her mother never gave her the acceptance and the loving words that Dorothy needed to receive. Added to this was Dorothy's concern about her mother's spiritual condition. The mother claimed to be a Christian, but Dorothy never showed any, saw any signs of that, nor the words that Dorothy was expected to hear from her mom about her mom's salvation. Dorothy became so depressed and so exhausted that she could hardly drag herself to work every day and back home, and then her mother died. Dorothy had never admitted to herself that the reason she'd kept her mom alive was she wanted her mother to say the right words at the end. It never happened. And Dorothy felt cheated and angry and defeated. It may hurt to face up to the ways that our parents have failed us. It's even worse not to be aware that we're still carrying around this baggage on our back, recognizing unforgiven hurts is the first step. Here's the second. Dealing with unrealistic expectations. A member of a support group prayed, Lord, 
Help me see my dad as you see him. How does God see her father? As he really is. Mary Ann's father had a stroke. He con she constantly nags him. Straighten out your foot. Wipe off your mouth. When the nurse's aide is with him through the day, she doesn't say anything and they get along just fine. But the aide has no memory of what Mary Ann's dad was before the stroke. And the nurse treats him as he really is now and the way he was then rather than the way he was before the stroke. Mary Ann's nagging's not going to make things better. As a matter of fact, it'll keep her from enjoying the last moments that she has with her father. Unless adult children of aging parents are able to give up the unrealistic expectations that we have of our parents, we're not going to be a lot of help. We need to see that the problem is not our parent or not an uncaring God or a confused neighbor. The problem is our own perspective. We need to grow up and let go of our pride and our selfishness that might be getting in the way. These are hard words for caring Christian people like you and me who love our parents and want to do the best for them. Jesus' words to the man who wanted to go and bury his father, remember, they're equally hard. Matthew 8, verses 21 through 22. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Many believe this means not that the man's father had already died, but that the man's father would die sometime in the future and the guy wanted to do what was his obligation to care for his father. Listen to the way Gene Peterson paraphrases this passage from the message. First things first, your business is life, not death. The alternative to accepting our parents' aging is denial and withdrawal and struggle to assert our own control. God's best for you and me, whether we are caregiving, adult child, or an aging parent, God's best for us happens when we let go of the past and follow Him. For adult children, this might mean an emotional leave from our parents. The result is, we'll be closer to God and have a more fulfilling relationship with them. Why? Because our business is life and not death. Let's pray. God, thank you for calling us into families and with all the confusion that that brings and the obligation that brings and the expectations we bring. Help us as people who are either parents or or children trying to help. Help us to do the things that we need to do. To release them. To offer ourselves to you. To find forgiveness when the need is there. We thank you and trust you for being with us through this maze. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh -huh.